What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new HTC One M9, which is kind of an evolution of the very popular M8 from last year. So the M9 aims to fix some of the weaknesses of the M8 while retaining the beautiful all-metal design. Now the new M9 is powered by the new Snapdragon 810, which is an octa-core processor, which combines two quad cores, one clocked at 1.5, the other clocked at 2 gigahertz, which also gets us the Adrenal 430 GPU. We get 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage, but we do have a micro SD card slot here, which supports 128 gig cards. Now the camera also makes a big leap here. We go from the four ultra pixel camera to a 20.7 megapixel rear facing camera, still with no optical image stabilization, but of course you do get 4K video recording and a lot more resolution than the four ultra pixels we had last year. But we haven't lost the ultra pixel camera entirely. That is now on the front of the phone, which is now your front facing camera, which is good for 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Now the M9 retains the excellent five inch 1080p display from the M8. Uh, same resolution here with a pixel density of 441. So it's a nice, bright, vivid display. One of my favorite features from the M8. And returning once again are the front facing HTC Boom Sound stereo speakers, which made the M8 one of the best sounding phones you could buy. And I'm really excited to test it out with the new M9. Now I want to give a big shout out to 28mobile.com who hooked me up once again with this device for an early review. I get a lot of my devices from them. So if you want to check them out, go to 28mobile.com. All right, first thing we need to do here is crack into our packaging here. I'm just going to remove the plastic surrounding it, so I'm gonna slice the plastic back here, peel it back. All right, so let's go ahead and lift the lid here. And inside is our HTC One M9, very familiar packaging to the previous generation. So we can go ahead and lift it up here. Now this is the silver and gold color. So if you want silver, it comes with this kind of gold finish on the front and along the side here, and silver on the back. So let's go ahead and peel off this plastic here. And there we go, very nice looking. Right away you can see that nice milled, sort of polished look to the metal here. Looks really nice, more like jewelry here. You can see that nice glossy, smooth finish to the uh, gold trim along the side. Of course, we're gonna take a close look at that in just a minute. Now let's take a look at our contents here. So we have our USB wall adapter here. So if we pull this out, you'll see the ACC branding. So we get a pretty standard ACC wall adapter, no rapid charging here. We also get our USB charging cable, just USB 2.0, no USB-C here. We also get a set of HTC's in-ear style headphones with a remote control and microphone built right in. And of course, they do give us these replacement ear tips so you can find the right size. And of course, we have a standard array of paperwork from a QuickSart guide to our warranty statement and a SIM ejection tool. We also have a set of IMEI and serial number stickers. All right, so let's take a look at our design here. So once again, we have a five inch phone and it's not terribly compact. You see, we have fairly large bezels at the top and bottom. So they haven't really shrunk it down the phone at all since the M8. In fact, it's slightly thicker, but it is slightly shorter. And we're gonna compare this to the previous generation later in this video. So at the top, we have our four ultra pixel camera or four megapixels, effectively four megapixels of resolution. But ultra pixel basically means that you get better low light performance because the pixel sizes in the sensor are larger. We also have our ambient light sensor and proximity sensor right next to it and then we have our speaker grill which also hides an LED notification light. Down below, we have the other front-facing stereo speaker, which also hides the mouthpiece and the microphones. You can see that we do not have off-screen Android keys, even though we have room for them. You can see they're all on screen. Taking a look at the back, once again, we have these antenna insulators at the top and bottom, which is a signature from the HTC One M8. You can see we have one of the microphones sort of hidden in there. We have our new 20.7 megapixel rear-facing camera, which is, again, a huge spec bump from the four ultra-pixel camera on the back. And, of course, we will test this out later in this review. And then we have our dual-tone LED flash. Down below, we'll find our slightly off-center micro USB 2.0 port, as well as our headphone jack. Now, we do have an FM radio in here, so if you connect a pair of headphones, those will act as your antenna. Now, once again, at the top of the phone, we'll find an IR transmitter, which allows you to control your AV equipment, and of course, an app is included with the software. Now on the right side, you'll find your sleep wake power button, which has been repositioned from the top to the right side here toward the center, which makes it a little more reachable, a little more easier to operate than before, but it does place it in close proximity to the volume controls just above it. Uh, but it does have a unique texture, so you should be able to feel the difference, but you will unintentionally operate these at some point until you get used to it. We also have our micro SD card slot here. So this does support 120 gigs, and you can eject this with the included SIM ejection tool. And on the left side, you'll find the nano SIM tray. 
Now for the most part, the M9 and M8 look very similar. Most of the differences are in subtle details. So for example, with the M9, the entire front bezel is actually metal. That wasn't the story with the previous generation. It kind of had this textured plastic which resembled the metal finish of the surrounding body but wasn't metal. So this time, you have a little more metal on the new M9 versus the M8. Now the M8 also has this nice metal chamfered edge. So the edge of the phone feels a little smoother, a little more continuous than the new M9, which kind of has this overlapping metal design. Design, which looks a little more like jewelry, but the edges feel a little rougher, a little boxier than the previous generation. But then again, it also makes it a little more grippable, a little less slippery than the M8. Now another big change here is the camera hardware on the back. Obviously they've eliminated the depth camera from the M8 and they've added a much larger 20.7 megapixel module here. Uh, so you get a protruding camera lens which is surrounded by a metal bezel as opposed to the flush design of the M8. Now once again along the top you have this plastic trim piece which houses the IR window. Now this also used to house the sleep wake power button at the top that has been repositioned on the side of the new phone. Now along the right side, once again, we have our micro SD card slot, but the buttons have changed quite a bit here. Instead of a volume rocker, we have two individual volume controls. We also have our sleep wake power button right below that. So again, a pretty big design change here. Again, to be a little more ergonomic than the previous generation. Now, not much has changed on the bottom here. Both the headphone jack and the USB port are in the same place. And on the left side, the micro SIM has been replaced by a nano SIM. So the tray has shrunk it down a bit. Now in terms of dimensions, the new M9 is about two millimeters shorter than before, one millimeter narrower, but it is slightly thicker, 9.6 millimeters versus 9.4 millimeters. But this slightly thicker phone does accommodate a larger battery. You go from 2600 milliamp hours to 2840. Now the new phone is slightly lighter than before. We go from 160 grams to 157 grams. All right, so let's take a look at our user interface. So once again, this is Android 5.0 or Lollipop and is skinned by HTC with HTC Sense 7. So you can see on the lock screen, we actually get all the dock items from your home screen on your lock screen, so you can quickly access these apps right from the lock screen. Just swipe up to unlock them, it takes you right to the app here. So that's very handy. So if you want to modify what appears on your lock screen, just modify what appears here on your dock. Now the other thing here is that you can double tap the screen to put it to sleep or double tap to wake it up. Again, that's on the lock screen. Now the home screen layout is pretty familiar to HTC Sense, so you can swipe all the way to the right to get to Blink Feed. Blink Feed basically aggregates all your social media feeds like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and that sort of thing. All your news feeds, so you can modify what feeds in here, your calendar events, and other things will just kind of populate here. So if you take some photographs, they'll actually appear in your new, in this uh, Blink feed as well. And if you want to modify it, just swipe again to the right here. So you can see whether you want to just see all your highlights, which is everything in chronological order, or I can select specific sites such as Autoblog here or I can select specific apps. So if I just want to see my Twitter messages, this will populate with all my Twitter messages and I can scroll through it and I can tap on them to launch right into that app. Now I can add many things to my Blink feed here. So for example, if I want to add business stories here, I can select specific websites to feed into Blink feed, or I can just select business highlights and it will populate all the popular stories from those feeds. You can also see I can select specific apps here. So for example, I can feed my Google Plus, LinkedIn, and quite a few others. But in the end, I actually find Blink Feed kind of addicting. I spend a lot of time here kind of reading through these news stories. So for example, if I want to tap on it, it takes me right to it. Instead of having to dig from app to app to find all these news stories, it's all in one place. And I think it's a pretty powerful utility. Now in terms of this home screen, you can pinch in and out to see all your available home screens and edit them. So you can see I can select this as the main home screen. I can also select this and delete it if I want. So if I want to remove this, I can. So that gets rid of Blink Feed or I can re-add it. So if you don't want Blink Feed at all, that's one way of getting rid of it. Also within that editor, you can drag and drop your widgets or your apps or additional shortcuts or you can just search for whatever you want. Now I can also rearrange these, but as you can see here, Blink Feed always has to be on the left side. Bringing down our drop down notification shade, you can see it's pretty close to stock here, so pretty standard stuff. And then you can bring up your quick send toggles, which are quite a bit different here. So, of course, ACC has added quite a bit here, and the way you use them is a little different here. So, for example, uh, with Wi Fi, you can just toggle Wi Fi on and off if you want. You can turn it back on, or you can tap these three dots here to bring it to the settings panel for Wi Fi. So, that's one way of quickly accessing it. But, of course, you can also just tap and hold to do the same thing. Now there is a lot going on here and this is highly customizable. So you get this little editor in the upper right corner which allows you to rearrange those toggles or add additional toggles here. So you can see there's quite a few others like screenshot mode. Uh, you can toggle on GPS if you want, auto syncing, screen timeout, uh, sync all. You also have NFC which you can toggle on and off. Yes, it does have NFC built in. It does not have wireless charging built in. And then you have glove mode. Now glove mode is kind of interesting because it increases sensitivity of the display so you can actually operate the phone with gloved hands. Now we have our flashlight here and the flash 
dash light actually turns on both LEDs, if that's interesting to you. Uh, so with both LEDs, you get more of a normal warm light as opposed to that kind of blue, bright LED light. We also have HTC Connect. So this will scan for wireless devices nearby that this can connect to, such as DLNA equipment. So if I have an AV receiver, I can connect to it and broadcast my media to that receiver. Or if I have a TV, a smart TV like Samsung Smart TV in my room downstairs, I can actually connect to this and broadcast the display and audio wirelessly to that display. And it works out pretty nicely. Now you can drag and drop any one of these up to your quick settings, but you are limited to 12, so one will have to be bumped out of the way. So for example, if I want my flashlight here, I have to bump out hotspot. Take a look at the app drawer here. You basically scroll through it and you can arrange it either by custom alphabetically or most recent. Uh, with custom, you actually have folder in here. Uh, so you can folder your apps in here. In fact, many of these already came foldered uh, by default. Uh, but if you want to folder them, what you have to do is select rearrange apps here because if you drag and drop them, they'll actually uh, bump you out of the app drawer and drag it to the home screen. So now I can rearrange them here so I can create new folders if I want or I can uninstall it or I can hide the app from view entirely. So again, a really nice quick editor. You can also hide or unhide apps. So for apps you can't uninstall or don't want to uninstall, you can just hide them from view and then restore them if you want. We can also go to Manage Apps, which just takes you to the App Manager we're all familiar with here, so you can see how much system resources are being used right now. So it's kind of nice to have this all in one location. We can also change the grid size of the app drawer here, so you can go with 4x5, which is here by default, or 3x4 to get a little more space. Now in terms of these Android keys, of course, we have Home, Back, and our Recent Apps. Now Recent Apps actually has two views here. We have these three pages of cards. If you want, this is familiar to previous HTC devices. Now you're limited to three pages here. But you can change this if you go to Settings and change the layout to Card View. And then you have that traditional card view that we're all familiar with from stock Android. Now within Grid View, you just tap the apps you want to bring forward and you can swipe up to dismiss them. Now one of the really interesting features here on the main home screen is this little widget called HTC Sense Home. Uh, so it will automatically aggregate your uh, apps depending on your GPS location and your activity. So for example, when I'm at home, it determines that, well, YouTube is most likely used, YouTube Studio uh, for managing my content, the Play Store, my calendar, music, that sort of thing, all of that is here. You can also see all my recently downloaded apps right here, which again is very useful. Now you can select your different location here so you can see what you might use when you're out and about. So I navigation, maybe your calendar, maybe the car app, and that sort of thing here. And then if you're at work, and of course work is where I live, so it's basically the same thing. But this will automatically change and update depending on your activity and how you use the app. So it's actually kind of useful. Now pressing the volume keys along the side gets you to your controls for independently controlling the volume for your ringtones, your music and video, your alarms, as well as your notifications, which you can independently control here. So if you don't want to mute your notifications accidentally when you turn down your ringtone, uh, you can uh, prevent that right here. Now you can also see that we have our Do Not Disturb features here as well, which is familiar from stock Android. Uh, so we can limit our notifications to priority, which you can modify under settings, and you can limit its duration from 15 minutes all the way up to eight hours, again, close to stock Android here. Or you can receive no notifications and also limit that by time. Now if you press and hold the power button along the side, we can actually launch into kid mode, which is kind of a safe environment with age-appropriate games and educational apps that restricts access to other parts of the phone. It's actually an app called Zoodles. And then you can actually build a profile for this user. So for example, I'm just gonna go with Zoe here. You can add a picture and you can specify the age so that this will load age-specific apps or age-appropriate apps. And then uh, when you're done, all I have to do is press and hold the power button again to exit kid Tap mode. the green arrow to play more games. And they'll have to enter in their birth year. So if they're not old enough to know that, uh, they won't know to do this. Click OK. There we go. Next up, let's take a look at our settings panel here. And it is searchable. So if you just want to search for things like display, just start typing it in. And then you can jump right to your display settings instead of kind of digging through here to find them. Now under settings, we have lots of personalization options. So you can highly customize your experience on this phone. So one of them is the ability to change the home screen launcher. So of course you have the standard. And then you have easy mode, which is kind of like the grandma mode here. It simplifies the user interface. You can add your contacts. You have your major apps on the front. And then you have all your apps which you can cycle through. Again, very simplified interfaces designed to be extra simple for certain type of users. Now you can modify this navigation bar so you can rearrange the ones they've included or you can add additional ones. So for example, I can rearrange this here and I can add this turn off screen toggle as well as some others. Now you're limited to four, so you have to pick four, no more than that. Uh, so for example, if I have this turn off screen icon, I can now just flick the screen off like so, double tap to wake it up again and then swipe to unlock if I want to lock it. There you go. So that's kind of a handy utility to have. 
Now you cannot turn off the back home or recent apps buttons, but of course you can turn off these other buttons and select something else. So for example, if you want your notification panel, there you go. Now you can just bring out your notification panel without swiping now. We also have auto rotate, notifications, hide the navigation bar, and quick settings. Now if you want to maximize your screen real estate, you can quickly hide the navigation bar. So when you bring up an app here, it actually uses the entire screen and only takes up the space when you need it. Now, of course, we can also change our wallpaper, our ringtones, our alarm style, font sizes, keyboard colors, and stuff like that. But more powerful is the theme. So we can completely change out the theme here. This actually takes us to this specific app, this themes app. Uh, so we can download additional themes here. So for example, if we just want this theme, we can download it. So it gives us an icon pack, a color scheme, audio pack, everything like that, and you can see exactly what people think of this theme. So now if I apply this theme, this will completely refresh the device. So now you can see I have a different lock screen wallpaper, different home screen wallpaper, a different color scheme and font style, and that sort of thing. Now if I want to go back to one of my other themes here, I can go to my themes here, go to HTC default, click yes, and then we're back to normal. But you can completely customize this theme experience. So you can change the wallpapers, you can change the icons. If you want a different icon pack here, you can see all the ones that are available. So if you like a specific theme but not the icons, you can select different icons here. So for example, if I select this icon pack right there, kind of a monotone theme, you can download that, stores it for you, and we can click apply. So now you can see the main system icons have been updated, but of course that's not universal. We also have sounds here. So we have a library of sounds to pick from here. So if you want to preview them, just tap on them. And we have lots of fonts to pick from here. So if you're a big fan of fonts and want the exact right one for you, you probably can find it in here. Now, in addition to our themes, we can also independently control the accent colors here. So we have default and we have a, quite a few others we can pick from. And as you can see, when you pick them, it automatically updates the color scheme here. So it changes everything from the drop down shade to the home screen. Now alternatively, you can just create your own theme here. Just go to the plus sign, start building your own theme, starting with the wallpaper. So you can choose any wallpaper. You can choose an image from your photo gallery. So let's go and do that. So we can select a filter for our wallpaper. Let's go with this one, click next. And now we have to crop it for the wallpaper. So let's go ahead and zoom in right here, click done. Next up, we have to pick a theme here. So whatever image you pick for your wallpaper actually influences the coloring of that theme. So the theme includes the icon pack, the sounds and fonts, and you can get a preview of what each pack uh, includes here just by swiping through it. So if you want something a little more monotone here like this one, let's go ahead and click that one and click next. And then you can name it, we're just gonna go theme two. So there we go, you can see my previous designs, you can see I've already done this one before. So if we click that, click apply, this will apply it to the system. So now if you go to the home screen, you can see the icon packs and everything have been updated for this new theme. Now you can also customize your themes using the HTC Theme Maker on the website. So if you go to themes.htc.com, you can actually log in with your Google account or your Facebook account, sync all your themes together, and then create new ones. And this is a little more powerful than the software that's on the phone. So if you really want to customize your phone, this is the best way to go. Now also under options is the ability to transfer your information from one phone to this phone. So for example, if you have an HTC Android phone, you can use quick transfer or you can do a full transfer. You can also transfer from another Android phone or you can use an iPhone. So for example, you can log in with your iCloud account to uh, use your iCloud backup or your iTunes backup to transfer your information to this device. And that will transfer your contacts, calendars, bookmarks, text messages, photos, and more from iCloud. Now under displays and gestures, you'll find something called motion launch gestures. Many of these are off by default, but we're gonna go through all of them here. Now, if you don't know what each one of these does or how it works, you get these little tutorials, that'll explain how they work, but let's go through them one by one. Now, these work on the lock screen when the device is turned off. So, of course, we have the double tap to wake up the device, double tap to put it back to sleep. You can also swipe down to launch into a voice dialer. You can swipe to the left to launch right into your home screen. You can swipe up to directly unlock the device and you can bypass the unlock code if you prefer. You can also swipe to the right to launch right into blink feed. Now if you rotate the phone to a horizontal position and press and hold the volume key, this will launch the camera app. We also have our media gesture here, which you can toggle on and off. So if you're within an app such as YouTube here, if you use a three finger gesture to swipe up, you can actually cast this to a wireless device like a Samsung Smart TV or any other device that you can wirelessly connect to to broadcast media. Now in terms of audio, we have HTC Boom Sound with Dolby Audio, and you have a quick toggle here for music mode with internal speakers or theater mode with internal speakers. So this is best for movies, this is best for listening to music. Now in terms of storage, this phone has 32 gigs internally, and the system takes up about 10 gigs of that 
that. So you have about 22 gigs left for photos and apps and that sort of thing. Of course, with 4K video recording, that takes up quite a bit more space here. So already I've used up almost about two gigs for photos and video. But of course, you also have a micro SD card slot, which you can manage here as well. Now under power, we have lots of power saving options here. So we have the standard power saver, and then we have extreme power saving mode. And of course, we have all of our battery usage information. Unfortunately, what it doesn't tell us is the display time. So total display time, this uh, unfortunately will not tell you. But in terms of power saving, we have the standard power saving mode, uh, which will dial back CPU performance, the display brightness, turn off vibration to save power, and turn off data connections when you're not using it. So if you turn that on, uh, that will save power using the standard measures. But with extreme power saving mode, you can turn this on or you can change when this automatically turns on so right now it's set to 10 percent. so once the battery drops down to 10 percent, this automatically kicks in but of course you can modify that so let's go and turn this on to show you exactly what happens but basically this completely changes the launcher so we have a very simplified launcher a very dark display it turns off most of the uh, background color so the display is mostly dim uh, and then it also minimizes what apps are included here. So very simplified interface. It's kind of a limp home mode. It's really meant to um, extend the battery life to its maximum while retaining critical function. Now taking a look at the camera software, again, pretty familiar stuff. You tap anywhere in the scene to adjust the exposure and focus. You can tap and hold to lock exposure and focus and tap anywhere again to release it. Of course, you can pinch in and out to zoom, snap your photograph and tap to hold for continuous photographs. It's not terribly fast here. And then you can pick the photograph you want as your best shot. Now, as you can see, it takes photographs pretty quickly and focuses pretty quickly, at least if it has plenty of light here. Now, we can also swipe between our camera modes. So we can go to the selfie camera. We can swipe back to go to main camera, go back to panorama, go back to bokeh, and some other modes you can add here. So we can go right to our grid here to see all our available modes here. So we can add additional modes. So we have photo booth and split capture. Those are the only two modes I haven't added here. And then we can also modify them just by tapping and holding on them so we can delete them like so or rearrange them. We can also manually control our ISO settings, our exposure values, our white balance, as well as more options. So here we can change our resolution, we can change the self timer, that sort of thing. Now we can also begin recording our video here and I can pinch in and out to zoom. Right now I'm recording in 4K so I lose the ability to snap photographs at the same time. Uh, this also does not feature continuous autofocusing so you do have to tap the scene to focus. Now you can see I also have a countdown timer here. You're limited to six minutes for 4K video recording. That may be uh, to save on storage space because 4K takes a lot of space or to save on battery life and performance because it does warm up when you're using 4K and of course does zap through the battery. Now this phone takes its selfie camera pretty seriously here. So we have lots of options, including this little beauty face slider that will actually kind of soften the details on your face to make it look a little more flattering. And as you can see, it's actually tracking your face in real time. Uh, so of course it can adjust just that part of the scene to soften the face, not soften the entire image. You can also enable a timer here. So when you release the shutter, you get a little countdown. So it gives you a little time to pose for the image. And then you can modify the image using the editor. Now in terms of camera quality, this is definitely not one of the better cameras out there. In terms of daylight conditions, it does a fairly decent job. The images are pretty sharp and clear. It does a pretty good job finding focus quickly and snapping the photographs quickly. But uh, the exposure tends to be all over the place, has a really hard time finding the right exposure for the scene, it tends to underexpose or overexpose. And the color reproduction and tones tend to be a little washed out and a little on the orange side. Now this camera is especially poor at low light performance. It has a really hard time finding focus. And when it snaps photographs, it does a lot of processing. So there's a lot of color noise, a lot of distortion, and a lot of smoothness. So a lot of detail is lost, even though we have lots of resolution to work with. Now we do have a dual tone flash, which is used to pretty good effect here. So it produces very natural light and it does a nice job illuminating a dark scene. Now in terms of video quality, again, we have 4K video resolution, but it does not feature continuous autofocusing and it's not stabilized and it's very noticeable here. So it's really hard to get smooth handheld footage out of this camera. So a lot of 4K cameras require optical image stabilization and that has been included on a lot of high-end phones, but this phone unfortunately features no sort of stabilization whatsoever and it produces pretty shaky results. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with a look at the front-facing camera of the new HTC One M9 which is now using the ultra pixel sensor that was on the back of the M8. And it's an excellent camera, good wide angle lens, great exposure, 
uh, great color compensation or color reproduction, and great microphones. I get great audio pickup from this camera. So this is definitely one of the better front-facing cameras I've used to date. So this is 1080p at 30 frames per second. You can see the exposure does bounce around from scene to scene, but it does a pretty smooth job compensating. Uh, so generally speaking, definitely one of the better front-facing cameras you can buy on the smartphone today. Next up, let's take a listen to the front-facing stereo speakers, and they have improved slightly from the previous generation, so let's compare them. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the second generation Chromebook Pixel, which is once again designed by Google and sold through the Google Play Store and remains kind of a showcase piece for the Chrome OS because it's pretty high-end hardware with a pretty high-end price tag, although it is a bit cheaper now. now the What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the second generation Chromebook Pixel, which is once again designed by Google and sold through the Google Play Store and remains kind of a showcase piece for the Chrome OS because it's pretty high-end hardware hardware with a pretty high-end price tag, although it is a bit cheaper now. Now the differences are pretty hard to distinguish here, but the new ones sound a bit louder, a bit fuller, and a bit more clearer than the previous generation, although they're pretty close and they both sound excellent. Taking a look at our Geekbench 3 scores, again, huge gains have been made from the previous generation. Again, we go from a quad-core uh, Snapdragon 801 to a octa-core Snapdragon 810. So obviously huge gains, especially on the multi-core score. Now in terms of battery life, this is actually a little hard for me to communicate just because your mileage will vary. And typically what I like to do is just take a look at on-screen time, but unfortunately the software doesn't let you see strict on-screen time. But I'm able to get at least 16 to 20 hours out of this phone on a single charge with no problem. That's uh, using it pretty heavily, especially during my review period here. Uh, so I'm pretty impressed overall by the battery life but it tends to be unpredictable. So for example, if you're recording 4K video, you will zap the battery pretty quickly and heat it up, uh, but that's pretty typical for 4K video. Now in terms of system performance, this is actually very close to the stock Android experience. It's really quick and smooth, and the HTC Sense skin has been well optimized for performance. There is really no perceptible lag or frame dropping or stuttering or stalling or pausing or anything. This phone is really quick, and definitely with that Snapdragon 810 processor, three gigs of RAM, there is plenty of room to spare with this device. Now, now one issue with the Snapdragon 810 processor is heating and indeed this phone does heat up noticeably under certain circumstances although it tends to be a little unpredictable and a little random but if you're recording 4k video if you're doing anything that's kind of system intensive like gaming or anything like that you will definitely heat up this phone and it becomes very noticeable now using an external temperature the hottest I've seen this phone get is about 105 106 degrees but most of the time it's around 100 or 101 degrees uh, under heavy load but a lot of times this phone can feel completely normal completely cool to touch under normal use but again it tends to be fairly unpredictable so in conclusion even though the m9 is all new it pretty much retains many of the strengths and weaknesses of the previous generation without really changing any of them uh, so we still have great hardware great display great audio and great system performance with a lightweight and highly optimized skin but unfortunately, the camera system is still pretty weak, although the front-facing camera is pretty excellent. So if you're a fan of the ECC One M9 for its design, and like the M8, there's no reason not to consider the M9. I think the camera may improve with software updates in time, and you still have a lot more resolution to work with, even though low-light performance has definitely suffered with the new camera. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.